Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I have a, this mic's all cool, thank you. All right, so uh, my name is Vivek Mabubani. I am a comedian. Uh, I was born and raised here in Hong Kong, so the fun part of my life is that I went to a Chinese school, which means I speak Cantonese, and it's like a dual identity. But at the same time, it's a lot of fun. Now, I want to talk to you about changing your mindset and turning tragedy, t tragedy into comedy. Because there's one uh, key element in any comedian's life, is we understand one thing is that Comedy is tragedy plus time. It's a very famous quote by a, a famous comedian called Carol Burnett. And what she said is, comedy is ultimately tragedy. If you go watch any comedian, any joke they say, nine out of ten times, it's always actually a really sad situation. Because there's nothing funny about saying, oh, I woke up in my palace, I took my helicopter to work, oh, I had a, had a great day. It's not funny. But reverse it, let's say you woke up late. Right? And you're late for work or late for school. It's funny talking about how you have to come up with these excuses of what you're going to tell your boss. You know, or should I call in sick? Should I say, oh, a boss, I'm not feeling well. Then you have to practice how your sick voice sounds like. You, know, you have to go in the mirror and be like, uh, hello? Uh, uh, hello? You, know? you have to practice all those things. That's funny because it's a tragedy. But a lot of tragedies ultimately at that moment is very sad. Right? But give it some time. Think about it like uh, when you look back when you were young, when you would have, were a kid, you would remember all those times you were punished and stuff like that, and you would remember how much fun it was when you were like, oh my God, I remember the teacher said this to us, and you tried to do that, and you tried to not hand your homework, and you pretended you were blind, but it didn't work, you know, stuff like that. So a lot of things that ultimately is a matter of time, and also changing your mindset. Now, why do I say that? Because in comedy, all we as a comedian are doing are simply telling you something you pretty much already know, just from a new angle, from a new perspective. So, for example, I always tell people to always look out for interesting tragedies. Like, when I was growing up, one, one thing I saw is racism. Racism happens everywhere in the world. I'm not trying to say, oh, uh, I'm so, please, please pity me and stuff, but racism used to happen to me all the time, and I found comedy in it where I remember it was like one time some guy was like, hey, hey, Guaylo, right? And I was like, can you please stop calling me Guaylo, all right? Please be respectful, I am Atta, okay? <laughs> like, do I need to teach you how to insult me? Like, I think you should do your homework before you come out and attack me. Because it's weird when I have to tell you, look, you want to hurt me? Let's sit down, let's discuss what you should do, let's try it again, all right, go, you know? It doesn't make sense. But I can find comedy in it because after a while, when people kept calling me Guaylo, I'm like, dude, you know, this is getting repetitive. Is this... Am I missing something? I mean, do I really need to like, put a YouTube video online and say, everybody, to all the racists in the world, please, I am an Atta, okay? Let's practice together, Atta, right? Something like that. You get my point? But the point is, all I did was simply take something we always do, twist it around, and kind of see the comedic side of it. It's still a bad situation. I'm not saying racism is okay now. I'm simply saying that by seeing it reverse where some guy is being racist to me in a wrong way, it's pretty funny. You know, when I tell the guy, I'm like, I want to be insulted, but you just messed up. You know, just if you try it a bit better next time, you know, the next guy practice more and go and insult him, right? So it's all about how you see it, the perspective. So I always say it's about changing your mindset, changing the way you see an item. So for example, I always say look out for interesting things in life. I don't look out for anything funny because I will find in life nothing is funny. Nothing is directly funny, I should say. But a lot of things are interesting, all right? For example... This sign I saw one time at a basketball court that said, no dunk shots. Like, that's a big problem in Hong Kong, right? Like, everyone is slam dunking in basketball all of a sudden. Now we need a sign to say, hey guys, no dunk shots. The sign should really say, don't try to do a dunk shot. You can't, okay? Just give it up. You can't do it. So when I saw the sign, I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, no one is slam dunking in Hong Kong. There's no need to insult us and say, don't do it. You can't do it, you know? So that, to me, is interesting. It's not immediately funny, but you've got to add value to it. Again, it's just how you see it. Now, think about it. How did the sign even come about? There must have been a group of people in a room having a meeting saying, you know what, yesterday I was watching TV, right? And these guys are playing basketball. I don't get it. They, they took the ball, they weren't throwing it. They were just putting it into the, into the hoop. I don't get it. Like, this is not right, you know? We can't have that in Hong Kong. God forbid somebody takes the ball, slams dunk, oh my God, you know, end of the world. Let's make a sign, all right? Everybody in favor, raise your hand. Okay, let's make a sign that says no slam dunks. 
And another guy's like, but sir, we don't have any budget. Like, we don't have budget for two signs. We have one sign already. We don't have budget for a second sign. Don't worry. We'll just print it out, okay, on paper, okay? We we'll just stick it on the wall on paper. It's good enough, right? So all these things is just seeing the new angle. How did this even come about? But the thing, though, is that for me, this is funny because it's just it's so ridiculous to have such a sign, especially here where this is not exactly a common practice, in my opinion. Now, I always say look out for things. Like, look out for other interesting angles on life. In everything you do, always find a new angle. Uh, I used to read a book called uh, Think Like Da Vinci, and it always said try to find at least three angles in everything you see. Because what you'll find is the first angle is the angle everybody sees, right? The second angle, yes, maybe somebody caught it as well. But the third time, the third angle you see, chances are that's something people did not notice. And as a comedian, that's our job. We're trying to find a new angle on the situation, and that angle is humor. And we're trying to find the humor out of whatever situation it is. So, for example, one time I was in Cheng Chao walking around. I saw this sign that says, and the company's name is called Nutrition That Works. But it's a limited company. So what happens is, when you put the sign together, it's nutrition that works limited. I don't know if they're being honest, or they, didn't, you know, they just didn't realize this, you know, but I thought it was funny. I was like, this is an interesting thing. You know? So again, it's these interesting angles. Look everywhere you go. Don't immediately just say, oh, it's a sign. I get it. But like, wait, what more can I see in the sign? Look out for interesting connections. I have this habit where I like to go out and notice people's license plates. And I find in Hong Kong, you get the coolest license plates everywhere, right? This one time, I saw a car, Mr. V. I'm like, all right, my name's Vivek. I'm going to stand around there, pretend that's my car, right? All right, guys, Mr. V, that's right. You want to come for a ride? Stuff like that. It was a random picture I took. Just, you know, I thought, I looked at my camera. I was like, oh, it's a pretty cool picture. I like it, right? Another day, I suddenly saw another car that said Mr. T. I was like, ooh, interesting, right? Then I thought to myself, wait. I wonder if Mr. V and Mr. T know each other. Like, you see Mr. V, you see Mr. T. Do they, are they brothers? And if they are, I can tell you Mr. V is obviously more successful than Mr. T. The reason why, because Mr. V drives a Mercedes-Benz, Mr. T is just a BMW. So clearly, Mr. V does better than Mr. T, right? So I, all these things is just changing it. Like, this could have been just another boring day for me where I just see a car, big deal but I'm trying to find those angles. Same with tragedy. A tragedy for me is hilarious because this is my essence of my jokes. I can give you a good example. Like uh, many, many years ago, I went on a boat trip with my friends, right? So we're on the boat, we go into the sea to swim. I'm swimming around, having fun, and we see there's a beach. And between me and the beach, uh, there's this uh, shark net. And on the top of the shark net, they have this metal tubing. And so I remember watching the movie Free Willy, where, you know, the whale just jumps over the kid. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be free willy. I feel like a whale. I'm going to swim, jump over the shark net, go to the beach and be like a man. Yeah, let's do this, right? So here I am, free willy in my head, swim to swim. I try to go over the, the shark net. The metal tube is there. I hit my knee on the metal tube, dislocate my kneecap, and I get over it. I go to the other side. Now, the problem is I get over the shark net. I'm on the other side thinking, okay, this is great. You know, I'm in the water. Oh, I'm good, guys. I'm good. Now, the issue is I got to pretend I'm cool because I'm a man, right? As men, we don't let people know we get hurt. I'm like, I'm fine, guys. You guys keep having fun. My leg is cool. It's cool. You know, I'm flexible. Something like that, right? So I'm on the other side thinking now I have a problem because A, I've hurt my knee. B, I got to now go back over the shark net to go back to the boat. So now I'm thinking, how am I going to crawl over the shark net? I'm like trying to push myself, everything. So finally, I get over it. I manage to somehow swim back to the boat. I get on the boat. I'm limping. I'm like, oh, my God, this hurts. But when my friends come down, yeah, Viv, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm just tired. You know, just, just cramp, just cramp, right? Right? And then I remember I, I went to the hospital afterwards. I saw the doctor. I had a cast for a good six weeks. And I had to go for physiotherapy. And at physiotherapy, I remember the physiotherapist told me the best way to help your leg heal faster is to go swimming. <laughs> and I was like, don't you dare suggest swimming as a cure to this incident, right? 
But to me, it's hilarious. This whole incident is just funny. Just the idea of how I try to attempt to jump over that thing. I hurt myself after many, many weeks. The guy tells me to go swimming. So it's a, still a tragedy. But after a while, I thought about it. This is just funny to me. So therefore, what I'm trying to say is that I did not change the situation. I did not say all of a sudden I became Superman, but I just changed the angle. I pretended I was like the, the whale from the movie. I talked about how I met the physiotherapist, and he told me without realizing how I injured myself that I should go swimming. It's all how you see the angle, right? So same with this, this idea is like see connections. I try to connect the dots, and the more I can connect dots, the more I find funny things in life. Like tragedy, if I find somehow to connect this tragedy to that tragedy, it's just funny to me. So again, it's about how you see things. The angle is the essence of comedy. The angle is the essence of finding the humor. And that's why I suggest every time you look at something, minimum three angles. You look at a chair, don't just see it as something you sit on. What's the other angle? What if you pick it up? Can you use it as a weight? I can go to the gym with a chair, right? Can you use that as a weapon? Yes, I can do it. I can throw it at people, right? You can do so many things with just a chair. And that's the essence of comedy, just finding different angles. Pick it up, throw it around, you know, upside down. It's all what comedy is about. Now, moving forward, uh, as I said, connections, right? Now, I started this obsession of noticing cars and license plates. So I would see, you know, Mr. I would see Mr. T, Mr. V, and I saw one day this car with a license plate called IPO. I'm like, all right, cool, I guess initial public offering, maybe that's how he got his money to buy the car. But I thought about it, I was like, you know, in IPOs, guys who get, uh, their company goes up public and stuff, you make a lot of money normally, right? How come he only bought a Mercedes Benz? Wouldn't you want to buy a Ferrari or something, like a Rolls Royce, unless your company didn't do very well, right? Unless you had a really bad public offering, then yeah, we'll change it up. Then I, I, things just started happening. I noticed another car. Now, this time I saw this car with a number eight. I'm like, wow, that's cool, right? Clearly, rich guy, number eight, slick car, you want to drive it around town. Then I found another connection. If you notice, all these cars were parked in the same spot. If you notice, it's the same location. Look at that, like 4K, yeah, you know, like, you know, all that stuff. You'll see, oh, sorry. You'll see Mr. T, this guy's over right in this place as well. This guy, the next guy as well, same spot as well. And I was like, wait, is this a feng shui spot? Can I just stand here and get rich? Is, that, is this what it's all about? So I stand there, I'm like, yep, still no money. I'm checking my stocks, nope, not going up. This doesn't work, right? So my point again is that all this could be just simple things in life. This is just a car parked in a, in a location, that's all it is. But it's about the angle. Because I had the previous two photos as references, suddenly there's a new connection, where I have these three cars in the same place, boom, another comedic angle. You get it? So a lot of things is about the angle you see things, not the situation. You cannot change the situation. You cannot avoid bad things in life. You cannot avoid tragedies. It's how you perceive them that can change the way you enjoy or not enjoy them. So again, cars was my thing, so therefore I was like, wow, is this parking spot like, you know, really good luck or something? And I don't know. You never know. Maybe tomorrow I'll see another car there. Um, now, it's about tuning your mind. Uh, you know, there's a very uh, famous kind of psychological test where they say, if you focus on one thing, for example, let's say purple objects. If I tell you, go look around for purple objects, you will suddenly find the world is full of purple objects, right? Because you're in tune looking for that. Now, as a comedian, what my objective is, I'm trying to find comedy in life. So I'm tuning my mind to comedic incidents. That's all I'm doing. Any tragedy happens, I'm looking for the funny angle. I'm not thinking of, of like, oh my God, it's so unfair, but I'm finding what's so funny about it. How can I make a joke about it? For example, growing up, I would always be the only one in my class who was non-Chinese, and therefore, whenever we would go out, and the cop would see me on the streets, there would always be only me who gets stopped to get my ID card checked. Only me. I know I look like a terrorist, I get it, but it's ridiculous that, you know, like, it's so weird. I get all these things, and my friends would make a joke out of it. Every time we go out, they would have a bet. If today Vivek gets stopped by the police, we pay him one dollar each, right? <laughs> and I made so much money, I loved it, right? It was fantastic. To the point nowadays, when I see a, like, like a policeman walking down the street, by reflex, I automatically go to my, my wallet and I want to take out my ID card. I'm like, oh wait, no, it's okay. You didn't ask for it. I'm good, I'm good, you know, that sort of thing. So it was, it was part of life. I, I never took it as a bad thing. I was like, you know, hey, whatever, you know, be a good joke for my friends as well. Now, so the point I'm saying is that it's about tuning your mind. Again, if you tune your mind to just say, oh, tragedies are bad and negative, then they're going to be bad and negative. But if you tune your mind and say, you know what, I want to find a way to deal with this in a funny way or have some fun with it. Instead of me whining about how I hurt my knee, I'm thinking, well, what is the next joke I can use this for? As a comedian, I have to benefit that these jokes can become my job, 
right? Now, moving forward, I want to show you, is like, there's, a, there's a really good joke I really like from Bob Hope, very famous comedian many, many years ago. He said, you know you are getting old when the candles cost more than the cake. It's his way to deal with basically old age. A lot of old people say, oh, I'm getting old, you know, my, my joints are hurting and everything. But he kind of sees it in a funny way where like, oh, imagine the day when you pay more for the candles. Then you know, clearly, you're getting old, right? And so that's what I mean. It's all about how you see things. A lot of things that could upset one group could make another group really happy or make them laugh. Not because it's harmful, but because the way they see it. One classic incident happened to me. And uh, I was in Sha Tin one day, right? This is the shopping mall. I was really hungry, walking around, trying to think, what should I go eat? So I'm walking around, looking for food, you know, looking at people's menus. I'm like, all right, this is okay, this is okay, no big deal. Until I came across this one place, Triple O's. Now, if you look at this photo, you will see there are a bunch of monks eating burgers at Triple O's. Now, a lot of people, when they first saw this photo, got very upset. Oh my God, these monks are fake. How dare they do that, you know? Another group were like, well, you must understand, some monks do eat meat and everything, you know, stuff like that. I saw this and I immediately thought, oh my God, they must have the best burgers in the world <laughs> if a monk is gonna give up his religion to eat these burgers. I was like, this is a marketing campaign, right? <laughs> Think about it, if I, like, if you saw this, you're like, this better be good burger, man. I'll have whatever they're having. That must be really good stuff. You get it? Again, the, the situation didn't change. Some people got upset that these guys were fake monks. Some people were laughing about how, you know, the, that these guys thought they, they could eat meat without being caught. I just thought it was hilarious just seeing these guys sitting there. And we all know clearly they are the fake monks who go on the streets try to scam people. But have some sincerity in your scamming of people. At least change your outfit when you're off the clock, right? At least just put on, put on a jacket or something, you know? It's ridiculous, like this is too obvious. And don't sit together. <laughs> like, come on, guys. I'm trying to like, you know, accept you, fine, you're here to take my money, but at least don't make it so obvious that you are fake, come on, right? So that's what I mean, it's all how you see it. For me, I saw this and I immediately took a picture. I thought this was hilarious. I have, and now I have this new obsession with taking photos of monks in different places. Right? So this one time, I, I, didn't, I didn't add it, but I, I saw a monk at a bank, and it was... Now, you know in HSBC, they have different lines, right? The, the normal line, they have the advanced line, and the premier line, right? So normal line is if you have at least, like, you know, a few hundred dollars in your bank account, right? Advanced is if you have 200,000 or above in your bank account. Premier is if you have a million dollars worth in asset or above in your bank account. The monk was at the premier line. <laughs> I was like, what? You're at premier and I'm at the regular line? Wait, 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 hold on. I thought it was about the, the middle way, right? It's about, you know, I want to be eating, no balance, not too much, not too little. Like, I don't know about you, man, you know? But for me, I thought that was motivation. I'm like, if a monk has a million dollars, I need to work hard, man, you know? So ultimately, it's all about changing your mindset, changing the way you see the situation. The situation will never change for you. It's about you changing the way you perceive it. If instead of always seeing a negative situation as something bad, see it as a positive thing and have fun with it. Find a way to make a tragedy into a comedy. Just give it some time. As I said, tragedy is, I mean, sorry, comedy is tragedy plus time. Carol Burnett's quote is something every comedian knows, and I highly encourage you guys to think of it that way. And that's my time, so uh, thank you very much, guys, for giving me some time. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thank you, guys. <laughs>